Hello and welcome to the Natural Curiosity Show. I am really glad that you're here today. I'm glad I'm here today. We have Paul Edwards with us today and I am very eager to get to know a little bit more about him and find out what he's curious about. Hi, Paul. Hi, Marion. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, are you kidding? This is quite a treat for me. It really is. I saw you on another show and I was just fascinated by what y'all were talking about. And so I thought, oh, I bet you he's got some really cool other things that he could talk about. You know, things that make him curious about the world because let's face it, it's a curious world out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah there's, so a, there's plenty of topics. Tell us a little bit about you, what you got going. And of course, don't worry, everybody. If you're walking the dog or you're mowing the lawn or you're driving, don't worry. All the show notes will have every link that you're going to be hearing about today and, and how to get a hold of Paul. Okay, so don't worry. So go for it, Paul. Well, thank you, Marion. I'm uh, uh, I, people are a little bit uh, unsure sometimes when I when I say this. So I'll, I'll say the word strategic connector, um, the words, I should say the plural. And, uh, and that's really my, my skill set. But uh, surrounding that, I'm an international best-selling author. My book is called Business Beyond Business uh, and the host of the Influencer Networking Secrets podcast, uh, which has been running for, it's getting into its second year now, but uh, I've been prolifically interviewing experts and authorities and uh, in some cases, some prominent national figures in the influence sphere. Uh, and then uh, behind all of that <clears throat> is a is a skill and an ability I honed during uh, several years in the insurance business as a connector, as somebody who is able to connect the dots and introduce person A to person B, and they both end up uh, their their businesses or their lives both end up being impacted in a very positive way, uh, which of course has ripple effects throughout all of their networks. Um, so that's. That, that, that's what I, that's sort of the overview of it. I, I would say uh, if anybody's curious what, what actually that means for them, I just like to say that I, I connect usually entrepreneurs and executives with pre-qualified prospects and partners uh, who want to have a conversation about how they can help each other. You know, that, that to me feels so good because I naturally want to do that i want to peep i want to help people move forward with whatever it is their message is so mm -hmm. my sweet spot is helping people tell their story now if they don't know what their story is if they can't quite figure it out i have to have you know like a mentor or a coach help them hone their message but once they have it all together then i like to send it out i like mm -hmm. to help them send it out let's put it that way <laughs> Yeah, um, And a lot of times they do need connecting with other people. So is that something that I could send your way? Is there, um, is, is it like a program that they could join or how does that work, Paul? Well, what we are working towards is a mastermind group. Um, and that, and, and basically what I'm looking to do is, is to find about 100 to 120 other entrepreneurs like myself, right? So they can be in any industry. But, but what is, what will be equally, if not more important to them <clears throat> is facilitating, uh, growth, improvement, connection, friendship, uh, and, 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 and personal development between uh, the people around them. Right. So there's a transformational side to this. It's not a mastermind where you go and learn you, you don't just go and learn these are the latest marketing techniques and what kind of, and that kind of thing. Uh, it, it comes from a, a hybrid of several different masterminds that I myself have been through. And I've sort of pulled from each of those and said, I don't want to just teach people how to, you know, build a better, not a better mousetrap, but a better uh, marketing vehicle. I also am interested in the transformation of their souls, the renewal of their hearts and minds in the process of that. So ultimately, that's what we're working towards is I want to create a, um, a membership-based mastermind uh, that you're a part of that provides, you know, it, 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 it does speak to that business side of, of earning money and increasing your, your, your top line. But also, 
uh, speaks to uh, regenerating and renewing and um, and decreasing the the clutter and the anxiety and the stress in your soul uh, through a variety of activities that we would incorporate into retreats and the ongoing coaching that we would do. Okay. I run a, a mastermind that's totally different than that. We don't talk about anybody's soul, <laughs> although I'm sure people, people need that. Mm -hmm. um, my mastermind is about teaching people how easy technology can be. Mm -hmm. And that really hurts a lot of people. They get, um, there's a stumbling block uh, with technology. Their brain says, that's too hard. I'm not going to do that. I can't even try. No, nope, no, nope, don't even want to. I mean, they really literally stop themselves because they think it's too hard. So my job is to make, make them understand that it's okay because I'm the go around queen. I know technology can be really tough. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can stop you in your tracks. But if that happens, I want to go around that problem and find a solution that's easy. Mm -hmm. You know, simple, easy. Those are two different techniques, but, but we, can, we can get through it. And as, yeah. a, as a mastermind, uh, we just we work together to figure it out, to figure out what their problem is and go around it. Mm. Um, I, I like the idea of the mastermind that you're creating and uh, I put me on the list because I think everybody needs to be in a mastermind and you're right. They're all different. Mm -hmm. So yep. some of them are social, you know, they're, they're really not learning anything. They're just getting together uh, in a group. So if it's, you know, people who swim uh, competitively or something like that, that you know, they're going to have a mastermind that's totally different than, than your mastermind or somebody else's mastermind. Yes. Yes. And I've met some of my most favorite people, best friends in the whole world, all over the country. Uh, and some are outside the country because of masterminds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most yeah. It's amazing. Own. It's amazing how much, <clears throat> though you don't want to make it front and center, the, the first primary first thing of primary importance it's amazing how much the economic incentive of growing and improving your business and improving the impact you can have on other people's lives uh and thereby increasing your own income in the process it's amazing how that facilitates great friendships in a way that if you if you deliberately exclude that it can sometimes, it's not that you can't have a great friendship without it. It's just that it, it makes it so much easier for two people to sort of lock arms and walk together for a long period of time um, and really help each other grow uh, and become great intimate friends in the process. Yeah, it's fun too. I, li I really like it. I enjoy myself. If it's not fun, let's face it, Marion's not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's why the house is dirty, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> not fun yeah oh dear all right well paul tell me something that has grabbed your curiosity lately something anything uh it doesn't have to be work related it could be anything that has just said oh my goodness am i curious about that well i can tell you marion that part of the reason that i do what i do is because of a lifelong curiosity of watching people watching people's behavior and saying, why is that? Why do they think that way? Why don't they think like me? Or why don't I think like them? Why does one person laugh when I tell them a joke or, or give them a, a friendly dig in the ribs and someone else doesn't laugh or gets offended? Why, um, why do some people go out of their way to, uh, to, to, to exude and communicate sincere, caring friendship with me, while others don't. But in their minds, there, there's no difference. They feel the same way about me. They just don't say anything or do anything that shows it, right? You know, all, all these things, I watch this happen because we all have a certain way we're raised, right? And so the way I was raised was that if you care about your friends, 
then you express that in certain ways and you don't wait for them to do it. You just do it and then hopefully they'll, they'll respond. Right. But I, what I, I, over time I had to get come to grips with the fact that not everybody's like that. It doesn't mean they don't feel the same way about you, but it does mean that they don't express it sometimes at all, or at least not in the same way that you would. And so I have a, friend here locally where I live and we have gone back and forth about this for years just talking over you know uh, different experiences particularly in sales because there's so much of that plays into the psychology of selling and marketing and building relationships and all that and just trying to you know put our finger on what is this what is this person's motivation what's influencing the way they're reacting to this why is it that you know, I can have one person on the phone and if I, if I ask for the sale, I won't get it. And then I have another person on the phone and if I don't ask for the sale, I won't get it. And which one am I talking to when I can't see their face, especially, you know, um, to, 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 to paraphrase my friend, uh, Dr. Ken Keyes, he asked that question on my show recently. And I, th- I thought it was a brilliant way of, of getting right to the point of saying, uh, it, and it's a lifelong fascination for me, and it's a curiosity. Why do people think, behave, feel the way they do? You know, Paul, I have a story I want to tell you that I know that you'll get. Um, long time ago, I started an IT company with a Microsoft engineer. Mm-hmm. She actually was um, let go of her position in a very large uh, IT company here in the Houston area because her mother was dying and she was spending too much time away from work and they fired her. Mm. And uh, when I saw that all the people that she had made relationships with were calling her saying, Hey, I really need you. I don't, I don't, I don't care about the company. I want you. And after about the 13th person or company that called, I said, you know what? I have business experience. You have technology experience and you've got clients already. Why don't we start a new business? I'll run the business part and you run the, the technology part. Right. <laughs> and she said, okay, well, within, within three months, we were moved out from the house into a, a, a nice office. And within another three months, we were in a much larger office. We grew fast. Mm-hmm. And so uh, my job was to hire and fire and deal with all the other stuff. And of course, I'm just a friendly person. I can't help it. I I love people. I love, just like you said, I'm curious about them. So on Monday morning, when people would start coming in, the technology people, you know, uh, I'd say, hey, how was your weekend? You know, how are the kids? And they would look at me like, can you leave me alone? I've got, yeah. (laughs) You know, there's a couple servers down over here uh, at the law firm. I got to go. Yeah. And I thought, wow, I guess they don't like me. You know, what a bummer. I mean, uh, the secretary would talk to me, but <laughs> you know. mm-hmm. yeah. So uh, in came this lady who was going to do a personality uh, test on us, the uh, Myers Briggs. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so I learned from her that the different personalities. It wasn't that they didn't like me because if we went out for a beer after work, they were fine. It wasn't mm-hmm. that they didn't like me. It was that. They're, they think differently than I do. And I, up until then, believe it or not, I didn't understand that. I thought everybody thought like I did. Yep. I, I didn't know. I mean, I, people act crazy, I know, but I really thought they were just crazy. <laughs> but no, there's different personality traits. And uh, I'm an extrovert and I'm, you know, I don't have any fear of people. So I just, I'll, I can make friends with anybody, you know, and that's mm-hmm. not, that's not how the world works. It's very curious, isn't it? I can hear, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of the GEMS personality profile, but uh, I can hear what they basically, they break it into four gemstones. So f- for your listeners and viewers who don't know, there's a, the Ruby, which is the type A hard charger, you know, top of the line type of personality. The Sapphire, who I, I hear the words of the Sapphire as I listen to you talk, right? So I'm an extrovert. I, it has to be fun, right? That's a, that's critical sapphire personality 101. All right, I'm and then, writing that down, sapphire. I'm a sapphire. <laughs> yeah. 
Then the other two, uh, describing probably a lot of the people you worked with in your company, there are emeralds, right? Now, emeralds are the analytical, fix the problem, solve it, everything's got to line up, the balance sheet, you know, everything's got to be neat, organized, structured in a box type of thing, right? That's My wife is an emerald, right? And, uh, and then there's the pearls and those people, the, these are the people who are nurturers and carers and love to support people, but they're, they're not, they're not loud like a sapphire. They don't, they don't stand out. They, they prefer to almost not be seen as they do what they do. They just prefer to let their work speak for itself. And, um, so in my case, I'm loud, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, sapphires usually take it as a badge of honor. <laughs> yeah. Let's party. Yeah, exactly. And, and here, I, so I'm a Ruby, right? So I'm like, I want to be the best. I want to be, and I want oh. everyone to know I'm the best, you know, oh. and, and all that kind of thing. And I want to have influence and, oh. and, okay. and people are like, I better listen when he's talking, you know? So it's, yeah, it's, it's textbook. It's, it's a fascinating study. It's a fun way of looking at it. And um, the longer I do this, the more I delve into it, the more I, I study it and think about it and try to listen for it as I'm having a conversation, the more genuine and um, unattached I get to be to the outcome, which is, a, which is a, a blind spot for a ruby, right? We want results. We want it, to, you know, we want to kick butt and be the absolute best. And I've had to learn to say no. Uh, for whatever reason, when I try to exert that, it blows up in my face. But if I learn to develop my, my, my undeveloped pearl side and focus on serving the people that I work with rather than selling to them, right? Just serving and, and seeking their good and seeking their, their welfare and seeking their prosperity, very often, I don't have to worry about satisfying my Ruby itch to be successful because it, it comes right back to me. And so I get to do that side of it almost like automatic pilot. I get my own unpaid sales force as I write about in the book. I love that. So here's what happened for me. It's same type of scenario. So I had these technicians who spoke their own language. And, you know, so I've been doing this for 30 years. So I, I absolutely had to learn what they were talking about, right? Because when customers would call and say they have this problem, I have to be able to relay from their language to the technology people, all right? Mm -hmm. yep. And then I would have to turn around and take what they said and translate it into the customers and how they would understand it. I literally am now a translator. Yeah. And yeah. I've taken that ability, because I like it, I really like being, you know, being able to take somebody who could barely email and show them that technology is not the enemy, that you can use it for good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and translate what the technicians are saying to them. So yeah. uh, I, I've had three different partners and all three of them have been the brains, okay, the technology experts. Mm -hmm. And I've always done all the business stuff. So it has been fascinating for me to be able to help those people that don't have a clue about what these guys are talking about. And I say mm -hmm. guys, but there's plenty of gals too. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, my see, wife, my wife is a software engineer, so she works in a male dominated environment. Oh, but yes, it's, I bet she does. She knows that lingo. She can, she can speak. She can, she's one of the senior developers on her team. She can hang yeah. with the best of them. I call it geek speak. Yeah. I translate the geek speak and down into the what people can really understand it. Another thing I learned is that technology typically is built, developed by those people, and they can't relate over here. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you go to use something like Photoshop or something like that, most people, unless they've been really trained on it, it's like, uh, doesn't make any sense to me. Right. It's yeah. just like, uh, what? They don't use the same language and, and all that stuff. So uh, it's my job to find technology that's easier than Photoshop, but can do the same types of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there are people like me who know that and know this and want to bring those two together. I, I'm going to tell you one more thing and then I've got Go one it. more question for you. So. When I first started, I, I'm a, an artist 
uh, wannabe. I'm an artist wannabe. Mm -hmm. I can't draw even like a stick person. It looks like a stick dog and my stick dog, you know, looks like a stick person. <laughs> it's bad. Right. But digital art, oh, I can really, really get, you know, get going on it. And a, a software came out. It was called PhotoDraw. Now, okay. PhotoDraw was like Photoshop for people like me who didn't right. know PhotoDraw and that type of thing. Well, who do you think bought that and shut it down because it was a competitor? Right? Photoshop. <laughs> so when I bought a new computer, it wouldn't work with my photo draw it was mm. like dead now so i had to scramble around try to find something else so it's been that type of uh lifelong um urge uh desire to help mm -hmm. people go around that awful technology that they're thinking about well and we want what technology does Right. Oh, yeah. it, it's it's undeniable that it has facilitated massive improvement and change to human existence. Right. Um, as a matter of fact, I have uh, I'm working on getting as a guest um, a gentleman by the name of Richard Tripp, who was the product developer for Infusionsoft uh, and Intuit once upon a time. Two very recognizable names in the software marketing. But this, but see, this is the software marketing that's proliferated in the last decade to 15 years that has made, that has, that has almost outsourced to technology the, much of the sales process itself, right? This is the stuff that gathers all of that useful information and leverages it and then persuades people to spend more money than they'd originally planned when they clicked on the first ad. Now they're, you know, they were clicking on an ad for something for 20 bucks and now they're $500 in the hole and they've, you know, they've totally lost track of time. Um, but it's, uh, you know, I, the thing that, the thing that Richard told me, which I, which I want to discuss with him is um, when, when you combine an understanding of how that technology works, so you have the left brain ability to um, make those numbers and those systems do what they do. But then, of course, you, you come from a marketing background and discipline as well. So you understand people and the right brain side kicks in and says, wait a minute, wait a minute. If we just do this the way the geeks did it back in the 80s and 90s, then fellow geeks will have no problem understanding what we're talking about and they'll have no problem adapting to it. Everybody else, which represents the vast majority of the world, is going to sit there, you know, like goldfish and just go, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and like I do, right? But then, in a, I've, I mean, who can deny, especially in the last decade um, with social media, right? These ads start showing up, these ads that literally can speak to you as though they have cameras trained on you in your most innermost private thoughts um, and then offer you exactly the product you're looking for through a sales page that not only will it offer you that product, but it'll talk you into two or three other ones you had no intention on buying in the first place. <laughs> that's, that's just, that's a, that's a, a brilliant interweaving of the capability of technology with the marketing discipline to go with it. Yeah. All right, so I understand you have a gift for our listeners and people who are watching us on YouTube. And I'd like you to talk a little bit about not only the gift, but also how you came about giving it to us. So what's the motivation and how did it come out? Well, um, let, me, let me start by saying this. If you are the type of person uh, watching or listening who wants to build influence. Uh, and when I say influence, don't necessarily think of the Instagram influencer, right? I'm thinking that of the type of person whose words uh, ripple throughout different networks, who's, uh, and, and, in, and in many cases, they ripple across time, right? Dale Carnegie's words are still of influencing us a century later. Abraham Lincoln's words over 150 years later are still influencing us. Oh, yes. Right? So if you're the type of person who dreams of having that kind of magnitude and impact uh, when you open your mouth, 
then the first thing you have to realize uh, is that there is a, a way to do that whereby your thoughts, your ideas, um, and 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 especially your actions uh, can can go viral. And when I say viral, I mean viral among your network, which in turn makes it go viral among their networks. I'm not talking about getting uh, two million hits on YouTube necessarily, though you could do that, right? <laughs> um, so, so having said that. Um, if you're the type of person who wants to do that, I'm the type of person who wants to do that. I'll just say, right. It's, it's it, this is not vanity. This is, uh, I have a lot of life experiences where I totally blew things and I hate seeing people make the same stupid mistakes I've already made. So rather than go out and make them and cost yourself all the time, money, treasure, talent, passion, energy, emotional stability that I've sacrificed on the altar of being a fool, um, you can buy my book, <laughs> right? And 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 you can pay attention to my to my content and start to see what it is I'm talking about, and let that influence you. Let that shape how you think about things. Let it uh, percolate and ruminate within your system um, until you start. You begin to see things that you've always looked at one way, and you can look at things a, a different way. Because when we change the way we lo look at things, the things we look at change. Right. Amen. I didn't make that up. I stole it from my pastor who stole it from, I don't know, right. Tony Robbins or something for all That's I know. Right. But, um, but nevertheless, um, that's what I wanted. So uh, as a gift, um, I've written this international bestseller business beyond business. I'm due to appear <clears throat> on TV in Idaho next week and I'm going to Las Vegas next month for a couple of TV appearances, which is great. Um, but in the meantime, I'm offering to your listeners and your viewers the same thing I'm going to offer there and on every podcast I appear on, which is uh, if you go to my website, which is thepaulsedwards.com, uh, you can get a free copy. All you got to do is sign up there, put your email in, and it'll send you send a digital copy straight to your email. Um, if you don't want to do that, I, I get it. There's a lot of awful lot of email out there. I'm not a heavy email marketer, but I do send like once a week digest of my, you know, the podcast interviews I'm putting out. Um, but if you don't want to do that, just reach out to me over social media, send me an email. I'll be happy to hook you up with one. Um, so that's, that's the gift. And I hope I did a good job of explaining the, uh, the why behind it. You did. You did. And I must admit, you are definitely a communicator. It didn't take you long to reply when I asked you a question. So I appreciate that, you know, Not oh, my, everybody my pleasure. Not everybody can do that or wants to. <laughs> I, uh, I've had a lot of instances in my life, Marion, where I, I didn't know what to say. And the one thing I learned about knowing what to say is many times it's knowing when to say it, not what to say. Mm. Um, and so oftentimes what I've, the mistake I've made has been blurting things out too soon or leaving it until it was too late to say it. Um, so yes, what you say is important, but even more important is the, the, the circumstances, how you say it, when you say it, why you say it, to whom you say it, you know, those are all judgment calls and that comes from experience. And, um, in the context of a podcast interview, uh, you know, I've done quite a lot of these. So, and, and I, I wrote this content and it's been stewing in my system for years. So it's, I don't want to say it's easy, but it's, it's gotten easier as time has progressed. Well, I've really enjoyed our time together. Mr. Paul Edwards, don't you worry. Those of you who are not at your desk ready to type in his address, I've got it all in the show notes. And I use Patreon for my show notes, believe it or not. I do have a website, naturalcuriosity.life. However, I find it so much easier and community building over on Patreon. So if you go to patreon.com slash natural curiosity, you will find everything that we talked about here today and all the links so that you can get your gift that Paul has so generously given us. Thank you again, Paul. I really enjoyed meeting you. I hope this isn't going to be our last time. Certainly not, Mary. And I thank you for, for having me and uh, look forward to continuing the conversation. All right, until next time.
Bye for now.